Today we're jumping into async await in Rust. What it is, how async and await work, why you need an executor, and the practical patterns you'll use in real apps. We'll compare sequential versus concurrent behavior, show spawning tasks, timeouts, and when to use spawn blocking. This is the foundation you'll use for network servers, GUI apps, and high-throughput pipelines. So let's make it solid and practical. Start by imagining a synchronous function that sleeps for one second and returns a number. In ordinary Rust, you'd write like this. The main function calls the work function twice. The work function simulates a task by printing a message, pausing execution for 500 milliseconds using thread sleep, and then printing another message before returning its input ID. Because the calls to work in main are synchronous, the program will first run work, one, to completion, wait half a second, then print its done message, and only then will it start running work, two, repeating the same process. It blocks the thread each time. After both tasks are completed, the main function will print their return values. Async programming lets you write code that looks similar, but doesn't block the thread while waiting. The trick in Rust is, async functions return a future, a state machine, and dot await yields control back to the runtime while waiting for something to complete. Let's write the simplest async example. To run an async function, we need an executor. For the tiny experiments, we'll use the Tokyo runtime, very popular, and I'll include the cargo.toml line you need. Now the code. The Tokyo main macro transforms the main function into an asynchronous entry point, setting up the necessary runtime to execute async code. Inside main, an async function named say hello is defined. The line say hello.await calls this asynchronous function and pauses the execution of main until say hello completes its task, which is simply to print hello from async. After the say hello future is awaited and finished, the program continues, printing back in main. This illustrates a simple flow of an asynchronous task being executed and awaited. Key idea. Async function say hello compiles to a function that returns a future. Calling say hello constructs the future but doesn't run it. Dot await actually pulls it to completion. Now let's see a concrete example that demonstrates concurrency versus sequential awaits. We'll simulate work with Tokyo time sleep. So there are two fundamental ways to handle asynchronous tasks. First, we demonstrate sequential execution by calling and awaiting work, one, and then work, two. Because of the dot await keyword, work, two, won't start until work, one, is fully finished, including its half second delay. Second, we show concurrent execution. By assigning the results of work, three, and work, four, to variables F1 and F2 without immediately awaiting them, the program creates two futures. These futures are then executed concurrently using the Tokyo join macro, meaning both tasks will run at the same time and the program will only continue once both have completed. Join awaits both to complete. Another common pattern is Tokyo spawn. This actually spawns a task onto the runtime's thread pool. A spawn task can outlive the scope it was created in, but must be static to be sent to worker threads. Spawn immediately schedules the task. You get a join handle you can dot await if you care about its result. The Tokyo spawn function creates a new, lightweight green thread to run the long task future concurrently. The main function immediately receives a join handle and continues its own work, represented by a 200 milliseconds sleep and a print statement. This non-blocking behavior is a key advantage of async programming. Later, main uses handle.await to wait for the spawn task to complete and retrieve its result, printing the final value or an error if the task panicked. Important. Tokyo spawn requires that the future you give it is send plus static, because it may be executed on a worker thread and must not reference non-static stack data. If you capture local variables into the spawned async block, Use move to transfer ownership into the task. How to handle blocking operations in async functions. Now, conceptually, what is an async function? Under the hood, the compiler rewrites an async function into a type that implements the future trait. That type holds the local variables and the state machine necessary to advance the computation each time poll is called. Dot await is sugar for polling a subfuture and yielding if it's not ready. Because awaiting yields control, you must not block inside async functions. Blocking calls like standard thread sleep or synchronous file IO will block the runtime thread and stall other tasks. If you must run blocking work inside an async context, use Tokyo task spawn blocking to move that blocking work to a dedicated thread pool. 
Here's how we do it. The task spawn blocking function is used for code that performs heavy CPU computation or synchronous I.O., such as the STD thread sleep call in this example. This function offloads the blocking work to a dedicated thread, allowing the main asynchronous runtime to continue processing other tasks concurrently. The main function then awaits the join handle to get the result of the blocking operation, which is the number 42. This pattern is crucial for preventing a long-running, synchronous task from blocking the entire asynchronous executor. Let's look at a pattern you'll use a lot, parallelizing multiple independent async operations and collecting their results. Consider fetching three resources simulated here with sleep. First, the code runs fetch1 and fetch2 sequentially. Fetch2 doesn't begin until fetch1 is fully finished, including its simulated delay. Second, it runs fetch3 and fetch4 concurrently. This is achieved by first creating two futures, which represent the work to be done later, and then using the Tokyo join macro to execute both of them at the same time. This means the program only waits for the longer of the two tasks to complete before moving on, showcasing a significant efficiency gain over the sequential approach for independent tasks. You'll see the sequential version waits for each step. The join version runs both fetches in parallel and finishes faster. Timeouts and cancellation are another essential topic. Tokyo provides Tokyo time timeout to abort if an operation takes too long. Here we defined an async block named slow that simulates a task taking five seconds to complete using sleep. The key part is timeout. This function from the Tokyo time module runs the slow task, but simultaneously starts a one second timer. Since slow takes longer than the timeout duration, the timeout call will not return OK. Instead, it will return an error and cancel the slow task. The match statement then catches this error and prints task timed out. Timeout returns an error if the inner future didn't complete before the duration elapsed, letting you handle timeouts gracefully. Now let's discuss executors. Async function and futures are just values. To run them, you need an executor, runtime. Tokyo main is a convenient macro that builds a runtime for you. There are other runtimes like async std or the simple futures executor. A minimal runtime less example using the futures crate looks like this. This example uses the futures crate to demonstrate a basic way to execute an asynchronous function. The async function hello defines a future, which is a type representing a value that may not be available yet. Nothing happens inside hello until it's run by an executor. In main, block on acts as a simple executor. It takes the hello future and runs it to completion on the current thread, blocking the program's execution until the future is resolved. This makes it a useful tool for simple, single-threaded async tasks or for bridging async code with synchronous contexts. Block on is useful for small examples or tests, but production servers typically use a full-featured runtime like Tokyo or async standard. Let's cover a few practical problems and best practices. First, async is not magic parallelism. If you await two futures sequentially, they do not run concurrently. You must explicitly start them and then await the joined result, like join or spawn them. Second, spawn tasks require send plus static when using Tokyo spawn, so be mindful of captured references. Third, do not block the runtime thread. Any heavy or blocking operation should go to spawn blocking. Fourth, integration with synchronous libraries. Many third-party libraries still expose blocking APIs, synchronous HTTP clients, database drivers. In async code, prefer async native clients, request client async, Tokyo Postgres, etc. If not available, wrap blocking calls inside spawn blocking. Let me show an example combining channels and async tasks, an async producer or consumer using Tokyo Sync MPSC. A channel is created with a buffer size of 10, giving us a sender, TX and a receiver RX. A producer task is spawned to send numbers 0 through 4 into the channel, pausing briefly between each send. Concurrently, a consumer task is spawned to continuously listen to the channel. The while loop will asynchronously block until a value is available, then it prints the consumed value. This setup allows the producer and consumer tasks to run independently and concurrently, safely exchanging data. Tokyo Sync MPSC channel is async aware. .send.await yields if the channel buffer is full, providing natural back pressure. Finally, cancellation and resource cleanup. When a task is dropped, for example, if you abort a join handle or the runtime shuts down, 
Rust will drop values owned by the future and run any drop implementations, so you must ensure that cleanup code runs in those drop handlers or use structured lifetimes to avoid leaks. Tokio also provides join handle abort to cancel a task. One advanced but incredibly useful control construct is Tokio Select, which lets you await multiple futures and react to whichever completes first. Let's look at the example demonstrating asynchronous race conditions using the Tokio Select macro. It defines two async blocks, A and B, which simulate tasks that take different amounts of time to complete, one second and three seconds, respectively. The Tokio Select macro waits for the first of the provided futures to complete. In this case, A will finish after one second before B has finished its three second wait. The select macro will therefore immediately match on the res equals A branch. Print a finished first, A done, and then cancel the execution of B. This is useful for scenarios where you need to get a result from the fastest of several competing asynchronous operations. Select is great for timeouts, cancellations, or racing tasks. To wrap up, here are the core takeaways. Async function returns a future. Dot await yields to the runtime. You need an executor, commonly Tokio. Join or spawn are used for concurrency. Avoid blocking the async runtime and use spawn blocking for CPU or blocking work. Use select, timeouts, and async channels to build responsive systems. With these primitives, you can build highly concurrent, efficient apps without the classic threading disasters. Rust gives you the tools to write safe async code that's also fast.